there, but it's supposed to be live. The issue is with us running. Hold up on, hold on. It's preparing now. Okay. It's my fourth time doing it, but it says it's preparing. My, okay, it's my, loading. It's gonna work. Yeah, my screen says it's live and it's recording now. I got a notification. Yeah, it's, a, yeah, it's gonna work. To, okay, thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Can you're you welcome. Elizabeth, can you make Ricky host again? <laughs> yes. And I will, and I'll stick around for a little bit just in case. Thank you. All right, Chair Vaughn, we're ready when you are. Sorry for the delays, everyone. Hmm. I believe I it's a switch, Chair to. Eskridge. I mean, I'm sorry, Chair Eskridge. Mm -hmm. I apologize. Old <laughs> habits. I'm sorry, Chair Eskridge. That's okay. <laughs> Mute. Okay. The meet this meeting of the Arts Commission is called to order at 707 p.m. Before we get started, I'd like to remind commissioners of some procedural items for this meeting. During the meeting, commissioners and participants should remain muted when not speaking. If commissioners or participants have a question or comment, please use the raise hand feature. Speakers will be called upon to speak one at a time. A random order voice vote will be administered by city staff for each vote. The Art Commission meeting is being conducted utilizing teleconferencing and electronic means consistent with the State of California Executive Order in 2920 regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. Members of the public may provide audio public comment by connecting to the teleconference meeting online or by telephone. Use the raise hand feature to request to speak, star nine on a telephone. Teleconference meeting details are available on the Arts Commission meeting agenda. Comments on matters not on the agenda must be submitted prior to the time of the chair calls the item for oral communications. Comments on the agenda items must be submitted prior to the time the chair closes the public hearing on the agenda item. Speakers are requested to keep their comments to no more than three minutes and time limits will be enforced. Guidelines are posted on the Arts Commission meeting agenda. City staff, may we please have the roll call. Thank you. Chair Eskridge. Present here. Thank you. Vice Chair Cerrone is absent. May I get Commissioner Glukman? Here. Thank you. Commissioner Vaughn? Seems like you are uh, muted at the moment. Commissioner Vaughn? Here. Here. Thank you. Sorry. No, you're good. And then Commissioner Veit? Here. Thank you. Roll call um, four are here. Next on the agenda is presentations. Our first presentation is item 200565, a presentation on art program trends. Trent Hall, the recreation services manager will speak um, on that presentation. All right, Ricky, go ahead and load those. And good evening, everybody. It's great to see you guys. It's been a couple months, and so it's nice to, to get the crew back together. Um, so I, I was, I'm gonna adjust the presentation tonight a little bit because I thought it might be helpful just to kind of set the groundwork again for the, um, or the groundwork about our public art programs as we are gonna be presenting the master plan for public art um, to you guys. So I think it'd be helpful to kind of just put the overview back in there about just big picture what our programs currently are. Um, and that way it also provides a little bit better reference for some of the proposals that are discussed in the actual master plan. Um, go ahead, Ricky. So, um, where is it me? So we've got basically two programs, but there's a third element to it. 
the first program we have is our art and private development program that you guys are very familiar with. Um, so these are public art projects that are funded by private property owners and they're placed on private land. Uh, the second one is our art and public places program. And this one is funded by public funds and is basically placed on public land or in public facilities. Uh, and then the third component to that is our permanent art collection, um, which consists of projects that have basically stemmed from the art and public places program, or it could be donations or other areas, but most of it is basically from the art and public places program. And that's basically all of the artwork that we um, own uh, as a city. Next slide. So the art and private development program was established first in 1991 um, and was adopted by council basically to help encourage and regulate the inclusion of artwork and private development. So what's really interesting about this program is that this was adopted, um, well, we'll save that note for later. That's, I'm stealing da Damon's thunder. Those are notes that he'll wanna say. Uh, but basically to date uh, over the almost 30 year um, history of this program, there've been a total of 70 projects that have been completed with a total of 84 artworks as some of those projects have multiple pieces of art. Um, and some of you guys may recognize this piece here is the clockwork that's downtown uh, right next to Plaza del Sol. Next slide. Um, and a couple of the requirements for it. So not all private development projects um, will require public art. It has to meet certain criteria. One of them is has to be over two acres. It's got to, um, or be on a main city thoroughfare. Uh, such as the one that's pictured here. Uh, originally, they thought that they wouldn't have to, but it's right on the corner of El Camino uh, and Fair Oaks, which is a main thoroughfare. So they were required to install public art. Um, or there may be some other special development conditions that require it, which could get dictated. Uh, so it's basically currently, it is just 1% of the construction valuation. And the artwork is, uh, it's all, um, the project is managed um, by the private, developer and then they then present their artwork and their design uh, to the commission as you guys know for approval and you guys get the final say. Next slide. So uh, in addition to that about 20 years after the program was adopted uh, council also voted to allow um, flexibility use so that way not all project if a project was required to have a public art this then allowed flexibility for the developer to say, you know what, I don't want to do public art on this property for whatever reason. We're just going to give you guys um, an in lieu fee instead, which would be 1.1%. So it was 1% um, if they did art on site and 1.1% if they did the in lieu fee option. Next slide. And this is just an overview boring thing. The biggest point I want, there's a reason you guys can't see all the details because at this point it's not helpful, but it's more just to see the timeline from when it starts to when a project is completed. It's a wide range that most art and private development projects will take between one and five years to get completed. So that's basically when they, when our planning department has received the applications all the way to the point when um, their artwork has been installed and their bond has been released to them. And there's a number of reasons that it can take so long and many of different variables, um, but there's a huge range. So um, it's also difficult to also anticipate when projects will arise for this reason. Next slide. And just here are some examples. Um, can, mm -hmm. can we take a small break? I need to uh, fix something on the uh, presentation real fast, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I can also do some filler time. Do you want me to sing and dance? Um, but just more about the, <laughs> Kristen's giving a thumbs up. The, um, the slide that I'm showing you there, and there's a couple slides there, is basically to help provide some context for some of the types of art that are currently in the collection. Um, as you guys have known, either you've seen them yourselves or you've been um, heard it maybe from others. Some like this that is pictured here is more similar to corporate art, as some people have called it, or plop art. Uh, and it's more um, in certain situations, I'm not speaking for them, but it could just be some developers are more just complying with requirements as opposed to investing in art. Um, next slide. It is owned by the private developer, so it is an asset for them. But here are some examples um, where artists have either incorporated 
um, into the site itself, as shown in the upper left hand side. There's you know, a little bit of sculpture elements, but those actually um, slope down into bench and seating areas. The landscaping and the walkways are also taken into account. Um, so that's one way that they've incorporated it into the environment. The railing on the bottom was a unique one where it's, um, it's an, um, a care center for senior centers and each of the balcony railings were all custom made and designed, um, but they were integrated into the site itself. So this is an example of one where you drive by the building, you might not know that the railing is actually customized public art. And then the one on the right is an example of some interactive art. Um, this one is over in the northern end, um, I believe it's off Matilda um, of Sunnyvale. And there's a series of doors that you can walk through, walk around, so it's encouraged to be a part of it. Um, so next slide. And then here's some other ways that things have been incorporated into the area. Um, the one uh, on the top is downtown where the railing and these and the, um, I guess, walkway um, <laughs> are made into art. The one on the bottom is not only the sculpture, but you can see the seating areas that are around are really integrated into that environment. And the one on the bottom right is instead of just a glass facade, they said, let's put art all over the outside of that. So people are seeing it art instead of looking into the building and seeing lights or people or whatever. Next slide. And then the other part of our program is our public places program that we mentioned. So these are public funds. Uh, they can be interior or exterior. So, so they can be some two dimensional pieces on the inside of public buildings. Um, they just need to be publicly accessible. And believe it or not, there's one in the mayor's office and here and there, every once in a while, somebody will knock, knock, knock. I'd love to see that piece of art in the mayor's office. And of course they are allowed to do that during our normal business hours. Um, and of course, if he's not meeting or doing something fun like that. Um, so ironically enough, this requirement was only adopted back in 2004. So we'd required uh, private developers to do an art requirement before city projects. Um, and many cities do it the opposite way. So I guess we're leading in that way, in a, in a weird way. Next slide. Um, so some ways that public art projects for the public places program are, are completed. Most of them are done through capital improvement projects. So whenever we build a new facility, such as the upcoming civic center, um, then we have a certain percentage required of art for that. And the other way of course is from our public art fund, which is the collection of the AIPD fees and any other things such as donations or there are other areas that, are required, um, that can only be used to develop public art. And that was the basis for um, completing a master plan for public art was to provide more framework for how to spend that public art fund. And these projects, of course, are recommended from this body um, and then council gets final approval. Next slide. Same thing, the process here, don't worry about the details. Um, but this one, it's a little more consistent um, from when the time the project is approved and the bidder, uh, or sorry, the um, the construction company or the construction contract has been awarded. From that point, it's a pretty consistent timeline. Obviously there's some variables in there with permitting and some other approvals, but for the most part, it takes about two to three years um, for that those projects to get completed. Next slide. And lastly, we discussed our permanent collection. We've got 62 pieces currently in our collection. Um, our department here uh, are the ones that maintain that collection. Um, so we keep track of it, document everything deal with maintenance or graffiti or any of those things, which thankfully don't happen um, that frequently. Next slide. And just once again, here's some examples of things we've done here. These were both community collaborative projects. Um, so the one on the left was done with some students in the Columbia neighborhood area. The two murals on the right um, were completed with children here that basically helped paint the tiles um, that go on this mural. Um, that's the one on the side of the park building at Murphy Park. Next slide. And just a quick reminder of kind of your responsibilities as it relates to public art um, for the public art, um, excuse me, the public places program. Uh, you guys will rank the proposals, develop a recommendation and then council approves. Um, and then for the private development program, the final approvals are completed by the arts commission and council is not required unless it's a special condition of that project, such as the downtown um, properties. Next um, slide. 
And then we don't need to get into this detail, um, but it's just a reminder that you get, there's criteria, um, you know, is it ex publicly accessible, that kind of thing. Um, you know, is it safe and can it easily be maintained? Those kind of things. Next slide. I believe it's just questions. I'll go ahead and entertain any questions. So I'll turn it back over um, to the chair. And um, if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to help answer those. Just a reminder to everybody to please use the raise your hand feature. Um, Commission Chair Eskridge, Commissioner Vice does have a question. So my question, Trina, is the in lieu fee, is that assessed when the plans are brought to um, for approval initially, or is that fee assessed at the end if there's added costs? No, so, so that is assessed when they're first filed. If there were any okay. changes that would require them to resubmit applications, then I believe they get reassessed at that time. Um, but yeah, it's early on in the project, not at the end. Thank you. Okay, right. if, are there any other questions? Thank you all, especially Commissioner Vaughn. This is probably the third time you've gotten this presentation, maybe fourth. So thank you for enduring that. <laughs> okay. Um, um, a reminder to the public, please raise your digital hand or dial line in a telephone if you wish to address the commission on a topic that is not on tonight's agenda. City staff will ask you to unmute your microphone when it is your turn to address the commission. City staff, do we have any members of the public wishing to speak under oral communications? At this time, we do not. Since we remain in a virtual setting, I will ask my colleagues to use the virtual raise hand feature to indicate the wish to speak. City staff, do we have any members of the public wishing to speak on a consent calendar item? At this time, we do not. I will ask now ask for a motion from my colleagues. Motion should be to approve the consent calendar. I have a motion to approve the content calendar. Do we have a second? Second. City staff, please conduct a random order voice vote. Commissioner Vaughn? Aye. Commissioner Vice? Aye. Chair Eskridge? Aye. Commissioner Glickman? Aye. Please note the motion passes four to nothing with one being absent. Okay. Public hearings, general business. 20318 Art Commission recommendation that the City Council, one, approve the master plan for public art, and two, introduce an ordinance amending Municipal Code Chapter 19.52, Art in Private Development, to increase the percentage of art requirement from 1% 1 to 1.5%, implementing, implementing Option 2A of the Public Art master plan. Is there a staff report? Yes, there is. Uh, this is Damon Sparacino, Superintendent of Recreation Services. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Yes, sir. All right, Ricky's going to um, post the presentation and I will deliver. Thank you, Ricky. All right, good evening, Arts Commission. We're excited to be here tonight, refocusing our collective efforts on the master plan for public art. During tonight's discussion, <clears throat> we're gonna briefly review the city's current public art program and master plan process. Trenton Hardy teed up the public art program, but we'll, that was part of this presentation, so we'll continue um, with that again tonight, which uh, we're hoping informs an arts commission dialogue and ultimate recommendation for city council. Next slide, please. Next slide. Uh, 
currently there are two facilities, um, 4.5 full-time staff, and an annual budget of $1.3 million dedicated to supporting the arts in Sunnyvale. In addition to the direct service delivery art programs, the city has a robust art and public places program. Next slide, please. As a result of the 1982 charter review process, the city established a trial arts committee and public art master plan to guide staff in the acquisition of public art. The original public art master plan operated from 1983 to 1993. When we talk about the public art program in Sunnyvale, we're really referring to two different programs, as mentioned earlier by Trenton, art in public places and art in private development. Next slide, please, Ricky. Art in public places is funded through capital project allocations, donations, awards, and general funds and more recently supplemented by in lieu developer fees. There are 62 pieces owned and maintained by the city located in parks, community centers and other city owned facilities. Next slide, please, Ricky. Art and private development is where developers can choose to incorporate art into their projects or contribute an in lieu fee to the public art fund. Today, the in lieu fee option has contributed approximately $500,000 to the public art fund. The current program incentivizes art to be on site versus in lieu as the in lieu option is slightly higher than the developer owned art option. Next slide, please, Ricky. The public art fund has a current balance again of 500,000. And as an impact fee, public art funds are limited to creation of public artworks and public spaces. Currently, we don't have a clearly defined process for determining how to spend those funds. One of the goals of the master plan is to identify a process for spending the public art fund. Next slide, please. Sunnyvale has always envisioned a highly visible program aligned with city policy and residents vision for their community. The plan's main objectives are to improve the overall public art program, update current policies, improve public art visibility, and potentially increase funding to match the community's and council's desire to achieve these goals. Next slide, please, Ricky. During the 2019 study session, there wasn't great support, or rather no support, of staff's proposed 1.5% increase or the consultant's proposed 2% increase to develop fees. Next slide, please, Ricky. As a reminder, the process, the master plan process included a great deal of community engagement, all of which provided feedback for what Sunnyvale residents would like to see in their public art program. The top four of which are illustrated on the slide. We've got functional art, whimsical small scale art, art integrated into natural environment, and then art integrated into new public places. Next slide, please, Ricky. The community engagement process, which included council and the Arts Commission, informed the master plan objectives. The plan identifies and lays out six main objectives. To broaden the scope of the public art programs, enhance the management of art programs, encourage involvement of the Arts Commission, develop web-based and self-guided tours, incorporate a systematic maintenance approach, and update codes and policies relative to the master plan for public art. Staff analyzed the six objectives and their strategies and created four implementation options, two of which are not viable based on the current status of the city's budget and elimination of the service level set aside. Therefore, the goal of tonight's discussion is to gather feedback and make a recommendation to council as to which option the Arts Commission would recommend. Next slide, please. Implementation option number one, maintain current art and private development in lieu fees and general fund and current general fund contributions. This continues, while option one provides for some minor general fund increases, the main goal of this objective is to generate a formal process by which to spend the current public art fund balance of 500,000. 
Under the proposed public art fund process, staff would identify public art projects that maximize the city's return on investment while minimizing ongoing maintenance and unfunded liabilities. Some of the projects can be taken directly from the master plan and some projects will be recommended based on general feedback identified through community dialogue. Projects will follow the same review and approval process as the public capital projects, which the Arts Commission just went through for Washington Park and Fair Oaks Park. And that is the Arts Commission reviews and makes recommendation to council for final approval on the art. Next slide, please, Ricky. So we've compiled a partial list of potential strategies outlined in the master plan, which are considered eligible for public art funding. We had gateways um, to the city listed, a sculpture park, temporary art projects, um, such as utility box art, benches, bike racks, pop-up murals, and then partnerships and collaborations such as art through schools or other um, municipal collaborations. As we look at the list of public art fund eligible activities, we should also consider the strategies that can best supplement the major capital projects scheduled to occur over the next several years, after which time we can reassess the budget outlook and the master plan on a whole. Speaking of major capital projects, we wanted to highlight tonight additional public art activity that's not outlined in the master plan or tied directly to the public art fund. Uh, so basically I was just gonna call out several capital projects that are going on currently and in the future throughout the city. There's the wastewater treatment plant, which will have a public art component the Fair Oaks Park project, which we've um, already weighed in on, the Washington Swim Center, which we've already weighed in on. There's the Civic Center project, which we're currently working on um, with Kristen and a team of, um, uh, I, should, I don't know how to refer to that. It's more of a, uh, a committee of both artists, residents, and staff and, prof and professionals of the field to help guide that process that will bring forward options to the Arts Commission. Then we also have the Branch Library coming online shortly, the 20 year park renovation plan. So every time we renovate a park and it meets the threshold of the dollar amount, that there, there'll be art added at the parks throughout the city. We also have various private projects happening in downtown Sunnyvale, which will be providing ongoing public art opportunities for the community to gauge in and enjoy for years to come. Next slide, please, Ricky. The master plan also includes some strategies that are not eligible for public art funding, all of which re require general fund or other funding sources in order to be implemented. These strategies could have been achieved through the council service level set aside or other general fund increases. Some examples include art workshops and lectures, opening or reopening the gallery space at the Creative Arts Center, casual staff hours to facilitate um, additional art efforts in the community, uh, creating an artist registry, regularly reviewing the MPPA, creating an online self-guided tour, and then additional annual conservation and maintenance. Given the elimination of the council service level set aside, option two provides the potential for alternative funding that would allow for additional public art activities beyond the current $500,000 available in the public art fund. Next slide, please, Ricky. That brings us to implementation option two. <clears throat> Expand public art through increased art and private development in lieu fee incentives. Implementation op option two expands public art um, and provides for additional activities by increasing the incentive for developers to select in lieu art and private development fees. The, this implementation option was created based on the feedback staff received from the 2019 council study session. Um, and we wanted to provide a couple of alternatives that would amend the existing art and private development ordinance to increase the incentive for develop developers. You've got option A, which would be to increase the percentage requirement from one to 1 
while maintaining the current in lieu fee of 1.1, that would create one option for an incentive. And then you have option B, which would be to maintain the current art requirement percentage, which is 1%, but then lowering the in lieu fee option to 0.75%. While both options may increase contributions to public art, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be predictable in terms of their contributions. Next slide, please, Ricky. Implement implementation options three and four. Unfortunately, as referenced earlier, these options are no longer viable based on current state of the city's budget. However, we've kept them in the plan and wanted to show everybody tonight that we can use these for future opportunities and budget considerations. Next slide, please, Ricky. During the council study session held on August 25th, 2020, council was asked which implementation option they preferred. Option one, maintain current developer fees and general fund contributions, or option two, expand the public art through increased development in lieu fee incentives. Five council members expressed their support for implementation option number two, which would expand public art through increased art and private development. And it was 2A, I'm sorry, which through increasing the art requirement percentage to 1.5 while maintaining the current in lieu fee of 1.1. So that brings us to our final slide and our next steps. Last slide, Ricky. So tonight we're presenting to the Arts Commission and make to make a formal recommendation to council. On September 28th, the Planning Commission will review a possible ordinance amendment. And then on October 27th, Council is scheduled to approve Master Plan for Public Art, as well as amend the Sunnyvale Municipal Code and also fund the first public art project which would be utility box art. So what we're asking for the commission tonight is to approve the master plan for public art and introduce, is to recommend to council approve the master plan for public art and introduce an ordinance amending Sunnyvale Municipal Code chapter 19.52, art and private development to increase the percent for art requirement from one to 1.5 percent effectively implementing option 2A of the public art master plan. And that concludes staff's presentation tonight. We'd like to turn it back over to um, the chair. Okay, since we remain in a, oops, since we remain in a virtual setting, I will ask my colleagues to use a virtual raise hand feature to indicate they wish <laughs> to speak. Do we have any questions or feedback from commissioners? Commissioner Vice. <laughs> Commissioner, Vi Commissioner Vi it, So I have a question. Um, if the only way that we are going to increase the 500K that we have now, given the current state of our budget, why wasn't a recommendation made to increase the in lieu fee as well? Um, I think based on the feedback we received from last year's uh, study session, um, there, was, there wasn't even necessarily at the time a lot of support to increase the percent requirement. So really the goal would be, and the other, the other thing is, is very few, I think we have eight people over the last, eight companies over the last six years who've selected the in lieu option. So we were really trying to create an incentive, like a gap, so to speak, between what the requirement was and what the in lieu is so that people might or companies might select that. Um, so if we were to increase it, that to be close to, if not equal to the actual art requirement, we believe that, and that would be no different than what we have now, which is the 1.1 and the one where very few people or companies over the history of the in lieu fee and the art and private development percentage requirement have selected that option. So we were really trying to create an incentive. At 
this time, I see no other comments or questions. Commissioners, please use the raise your hand function if you have any. Chair, oh. Okay, since we remain in a virtual setting, I will ask the public to use the virtual raise hand feature or star nine on telephone to indicate they wish to speak. City staff will ask you to unmute your microphone, then it is your, your turn to address commission. City staff, do we have any members of the public wishing to speak on this item? At the time we do not. Um, I was wondering if Commissioner Glukman had a question uh, for uh, Damon. Yeah, I was just wondering if we'd have the opportunity we'd have the opportunity to review this in more detail um, over email, like will we get the proposal and um, is everything, right, is this the final Go proposal or, it, or, or will there be another opportunity to get feedback? Yeah, hi, I'll go ahead and respond to that one. Um, this is the primary opportunity to provide that feedback the the actual plan itself which is close to 100 something pages uh, was included in the the packet and so um if you haven't had a chance to read the entire thing like i said it was a lengthy one so i don't blame you if you didn't um there will be like as other future opportunities either at the planning commission or at the um city council meeting so if you don't have anything now you'll have opportunities then to also provide public comment at that point. If you do it in that scenario, you would be providing public comment representing yourself and not as an arts commissioner. Um, so if you wanna provide your arts commission feedback here as a commissioner, um, this is the form for that. Okay. Uh, uh, I lost my picture. Um, additionally, we built into the master plan um, an annual report to the commission. And then we'll also be discussing, once the master plan is adopted, we'll be discussing regularly um, implementation options and art options to, um, to put, to bring forward to council. And then the, the other piece that was built in was to review it every, within every 10 years. So there's additional, those were all recommendations as part of the total master plan. Commissioner Vive has a question. So if this is um, approved and we will be then painting our utility boxes, who will be painting them and does the art commission get involved in the approval on what's on the utility boxes? Absolutely. Um, as part of um, approving or recommending this project and the master plan, staff wanted to also accelerate and activate the fund um, by starting off with one of the projects that's been um, sort of, it was brought up as part of the master plan outreach and asked by both council and commission on several different occasions. So we thought it would be a great way to kick off um, the implementation or activation, if you will, of the public art fund. That process would include something similar to what you experienced. And I know Commissioner Veith, you were at the very beginning of your tenure when we were going through the Fair Oaks project and Washington Arts project, but it'd be very similar to that where we get a collaborative of artists and we could in this case, as we've discussed as a team, um, give the option for um, the selection of multiple artists so that the landscape can look diverse and um, have different a different feel throughout the city. But, um, that those would be brought forth to commission, to rank and rate, and then recommend forward to council for ultimate approval and then um, move forward with painting. So, yes. Have, have you also considered having neighborhood groups be responsible for 
coming up with the designs and local schools so that it's more representative of the community in which they sit? Yeah, I mean, I can answer that, but I honestly think that would be a great one for Kristen to answer because she is the heart and soul of the, the project and program. And I know, I know the answer, but I think Kristen would love to share with you her thoughts on that. So we are still working out a lot of the details, but one of the plans is because we've had a lot of interest from the high schools through the years to identify um, in a couple of boxes that are close to each of the three high schools and um, having them do a group project. We would obviously be uh, marketing this and sending the RFQ or RFP out to as many local artists as possible and encouraging local um, countywide artists to apply for sure. Um, and a lot of it will just depend on how we structure it and what the time frame is as to whether or not people are going to be interested in applying. But definitely it's going to be have a community based component to it. Thank you. Is there any other questions for staff tonight? I don't see any further. All right. Okay. Oops. <laughs> okay, I will, um, city staff, please conduct a random please, order. Uh, Chair Eskridge, you need to ask for a a motion. And a second, and then we can do the vote. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I will now ask for discussion. We already did a discussion or a motion from my colleagues. So I move to recommend uh, the option 2A of that public art master plan and allocate $50,000 from the public art fund to implement the utility box art project. I second. Is that in there or do I need to say more? <laughs> so just so I can clarify, Commissioner Vaughn, you're recommending that the Arts Commission alternatives one and two approve the master plan for public art and introduce an ordinance amending Sunnyvale Municipal Code chapter 19.52, which is the art and private development to increase the percent for art requirements from one to 1.5, implementing option 2A of the public art master plan and allocate 50,000 from the public art fund to implement the utility box project. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> have a second. Second. Like Commissioner Glukman seconded and also Commissioner Vice. Okay. Okay. Next on the agenda is item. I'm sorry. Chair, oh. I'm sorry. Can you please ask for a vote? Oh yes. Okay. Um yeah, thank you. Okay. Um can we do a voice vote? Yes, so I will conduct it. Commissioner Vaughn? Yes, I approve. Thank you. Commissioner Veith? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Glukman? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Eskridge? Yes. Thank you. And then Vice Chair Cerrone is absent. So this motion will pass four with one absent. Congratulations. Yay! <laughs> it's been a long time coming. Now the fun begins. Okay. Thank now, you. uh, you're welcome. Um, okay, standing on in consideration of potential study issues. Next on the agenda is item 200558, proposed study issue, calendar year 2021. Commissioners. Are there any items you would like to agendize for discussion at our next meeting? Commissioner Vice. So 
I have a question about the study issues that we had submitted, I think, in July. Do those automatically, are those automatically considered? I mean, how does, what happens next with those? I mean, considered for discussion, I know they're not going to come up till next year, but what happens with our suggestions? So we didn't receive any suggestions. The form was sent out to everybody and the form was not turned back in. Anything that is potentially spoke about here, remember the form was sent out. That form needs to be filled out before it can be agendized for anybody to discuss. We can't just put anything forth without having that study session, study, so, sorry, form filled out. So I had, I had suggested a couple, you never received them? You, Obviously you not. You them into us? No, if you mailed them, if you emailed I them. Email, yeah. Because we would have replied back that with a, huh. that's been received and forwarded. Oh, that's strange because I, okay, that's strange. All right. There's still time. So yeah. if you, if you um, can find those in your email, if you have them, you can resend them and then we'll agendize, uh, you know, then it gets brought up and I mean, you could, I guess she can still, can she not get them on the agenda? Do we need to have the form? Yeah. yeah. But we do know we do need the form because we have to have the form and have it, it has to be yeah, for discussion. With our part okay. and for the staff's part to add on. And then next month is when we would do the um, the move it forward. So it's okay. Yeah. Let's get them in. So I, I thought I had, obviously I didn't send them to Jackie and I thought I had. Who do I, now that Jackie's retiring, yay you, who do I send them to? Um, you, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You can still send to me. I'm actually here until October 9th. Okay. What I'll do tomorrow is I will send, Ricky's going to have my same, my old phone number. Um, but what I'll do is I'll make sure to send each of you the form again tomorrow, as well as I'll copy Ricky. So you'll have his email address as well, but it's really easy. It's, it's first initial last name, which is Ellie at sunnyvale.ca.gov. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll take care of that for everybody. Thank you. Okay, are there any non agenda items and comments? Since we remain in the virtual setting, I will ask my colleagues to use the virtual raise hand feature to indicate they wish to speak. Do we have any non agenda items or comments from commissioners. At this moment, we do not. City staff, do you have any non agenda items or comments? I I just wanted to take this moment to thank Jackie publicly um, in front of the Arts Commission. This will be her last Arts Commission meeting with us. And um, and then this is the first, I think it's the first time you guys have had a chance to meet Ricky. So he has some very little yet large shoes to fill. Um, and we will all we're all going to struggle through the next couple of meetings, but I think Elizabeth will help us, Ricky, Trenton, myself, so we'll trudge through. But um, I wanted to thank Jackie for her service to this commission and to the city of Sunnyvale. Um, it's been a long and wonderfully uh, blessed career, and I still re I'm still receiving emails from people she'd worked with in other departments about what kind of a going away shindig are we going to be able to throw her and everybody we we're in such a weird time that we'll be postponing that but um that's just a testament to how well um jackie's respected in the organization and how much she's given to the city of sunnyvale so thank you jackie thank you everyone thank you damon thank you jackie i had one other comment um so I just wanted to give you guys an update of some fun, exciting things that have happened this month in the, our world of public art. Um, we're excited to share that we've been able to once again, temporarily install our murals downtown. Um, we had staff build a fun little setup. So we've got all five murals that are downtown. 
on Murphy Street. So when you're there uh, supporting your local businesses, you can go enjoy those um, beautiful Sunnyvale murals. Uh, in addition to that, we've also started Art Night on Murphy Avenue, and that's hosted by yours truly, Kristen Dance. She's out there every two, Tuesday evening uh, doing community art projects. Uh, this past uh, Tuesday, so last night, uh, she was working on a community mural, and it's basically, it's it's not as, you know, it's COVID murals, let's put it that way. <laughs> so it's still socially distanced. Um, it's basically families or couples or singles that are walking by that want to contribute, um, you know, a little sketch or a little drawing. Um, so it's not paints and anything kind of like that. It's more of a fun way to just kind of um, add to a community portion. And we might be exploring some other things such as chalk art, or some other stuff. So we encourage you guys to come out every Tuesday evening and support your local businesses and take some pictures with some murals and post them on social media. Kristen, anything else you wanted to add other than you're doing a great job? Uh, I would like to add that it's it's been a lot of fun. We've done two, two Tuesdays now. We have two more to go um, with the art projects, although we're hoping the murals will stay down there a little bit longer. It's just going to depend on the weather and how long the businesses are gonna to continue to serve outdoors. But come down, it's actually a really nice setting. It's very comfortable in terms of social distancing. Um, there's a number of people that are out and most of the restaurants are out and serving dinner. So, um, so it's nice. And last night we also, I should add, we had a representative from the Lace Museum down there and she was working on a Bob and Lace project uh, and talking to people about lace making, so. It's a good representation of the arts during a very difficult time where the arts are playing a really important part. So we're happy to be there. Trenton, would you like to share about Arts and Humanities Month as well? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. So You're welcome. Uh, at the uh, city council meeting on September 29th, uh, if you guys are interested in at least streaming in during the beginning when the special orders of the day are completed, um, the mayor will be proclaiming October as an, um, Arts and Humanities Month. And so there's a short little presentation um, just declaring it that that includes some highlights of some great things that we've done related to arts uh, over the past year. So that's Tuesday, September 29th and all of October it will be uh, Arts and Humanities Month. Commissioner Vaughn, I see your hand is raised. Yeah, I just wanted to check on the timing of your art, Tuesday art meetings, uh, Kristen. What what time are people assembling? We're usually starting around 5.30, and now, unfortunately, it's getting darker a little bit earlier, so we may start around 5 or so. Um, I think if we were going to do this again next year, we would look more towards the summer months because the kids all have school so there's not as many children down there as i'd hoped there were going to be um but uh yeah i would say 5 30 to 7 is really a good probably the best time frame thank you I don't believe staff, ha I don't think staff has any more further comments or announcements for tonight. Okay, I would, uh, Trent, can you email the um, information about the um, September 28th or 29th to us? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, definitely. Jackie, Ricky, can you guys send them to the entire well, thank you. commission? Yeah. Thank you. If there aren't any other items, um, this meeting is adjourned at 7.58. I want to thank everyone for your participation in tonight's meeting. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Chairs. Thanks, everyone. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everyone.